Hi everybody, this is a video about methylene blue. Just before I jump into the content of the video, if you don't mean, <clears throat> mind taking a quick second to like or share, subscribe, or post a quick comment on the video, I'd really appreciate it. So thanks in advance for taking a second to do that. And as per, per usual, nothing that I say should be construed as medical advice. This is for informational purposes only. If you need medical advice, please talk to your healthcare provider to get that advice. So there are a whole whack of questions um, posted on one of my videos for about methylene blue. Um, I've had several videos posted about methylene blue. They're some of my most popular videos and there's always lots of questions on there. Um, some of them were asked a couple of months ago. To be honest, I'm a little intimidated by going into all the questions there because there's just so many to go through and um, it's like, ah, I need like a good 15 minutes to kind of sort of sort through all of them. And anyways, li life is busy. So my apologies to anyone who posted questions a couple of months ago that I haven't got back to yet. I try to be as timely as I can, but uh, just, yeah, there's just so darn many of them about methylene blue. So I thought I would just answer a whole whack of them all in kind of a rapid fire manner. So I've got them all compiled here on the screen in front of me, and I'm going to get through a whole bunch of them here today. So uh, one of the questions is about um, whether it's okay to combine um, L-tyrosine with methylene blue, um, just for a little bit of a backdrop. There are certain things, the, the video actually that um, all these questions were on uh, was entitled something like, don't take this when taking methylene blue, and the gist of it was um, just to exercise a lot of caution if one is taking anything that boosts up serotonin levels um, while taking methylene blue, um, because if you take methylene blue with things that boost up serotonin, it can potentially cause serotonin syndrome, which is this really dangerous condition that you definitely don't want to have. So uh, folks are asking a bunch of different questions about like, what about this with methylene blue? What about with this with methylene blue? Um, again, can't provide any medical advice over social media, but just speaking about the topic um, academically, um, with L-tyrosine, which is a precursor amino acid that makes um, uh, dopamine, um, but it also is a precursor um, amino acid to making adrenaline and noradrenaline, or um, epinephrine and norepinephrine. Um, there might be some concern there um, where one of the um, issues with um, methylene blue is that um, if it's combined with certain things that can increase blood pressure, um, then it might not be a safe thing to work with. Um, <clears throat> so I, I'd be a little bit cautious around um, L-tyrosine and methylene blue. I'm just kind of watching out for possibly an elevated blood pressure issue, but not a serotonin syndrome issue. Um, to be perfectly frank, I don't think I've had any patients where I've combined methylene blue with L-tyrosine, so I, I don't really use L-tyrosine a whole lot. Some patients definitely benefit from it. Uh, folks who have an ADHD diagnosis can sometimes benefit quite a lot from L-tyrosine. The occasional patient who has um, fatigue issues or um, uh, addiction issues might potentially benefit just where it is a precursor to dopamine, but I, I would definitely be cautious with it. But um, if I had a patient who was on L-tyrosine and I wanted to recommend methylene blue for them, um, I'd maybe talk to them about monitoring their blood pressure, but otherwise I'd, I wouldn't be personally overly, overly concerned about an interaction there. I'm not aware of any formal recommendation to avoid com combining those two. Uh, the next uh, question was about uh, wondering if topical methylene blue um, using like that in some type of a cream would be okay to work with if a person's taking 5-HTP at the same time, 5-HTP being 5-hydroxytryptophan, a precursor amino acid kind of modified amino acid to making serotonin. So again, we want to avoid or be cautious with things that boost up serotonin when taking only meth methylene blue so as to avoid serotonin syndrome. Um, in terms of topical methylene blue, I have no experience with topical methylene blue. Um, I don't know what the cutaneous uh, absorption is like of methylene blue. Um, my general thought uh, for my patients would be, um, I would assume there'd be a very low systemic absorption from a topical methylene blue, so I wouldn't really have any major alarm bells going off for me. But again, you need to talk to your own healthcare provider to get specific information around that. So thank you for that question. Uh, another question, a very good question, how can you stop or heal serotonin syndrome? Um, so really, really good question. Um, I am not aware of a... Um, a, a if a person had serotonin syndrome, um, I would say go to the ER um, and get get treated there. Um, and honestly, I'm not really sure what the treatment is. Um, I wouldn't treat it directly myself, so I'm, I'm really not sure what the treatment is for um, serotonin syndrome. syndrome. Um, I think that the best plan would be to um, not have serotonin syndrome in the first place. Um, and then I suppose anything that would help with um, encouraging the uh, metabolism and breakdown of serotonin might be helpful. Um, so honestly, I'm not really sure how they would manage that. Um, if I was on a deserted island with someone and I happen to have a full, you know, fully stocked supplement store and I was with someone who had serotonin syndrome, um, I would likely be thinking about things to help um, break down that serotonin, help get rid of it. So working with cofactors for the um, monoamine oxidase A um, enzyme and the catecholine O methyltransferase enzyme, so MAO-A and COMPT um, being those enzymes or common acronyms. And uh, 
the, um, some of the important cofactors for those enzymes are vitamin B6, preferably in its active form, pyridoxal-5-phosphate, or P5P for short, along with magnesium. Um, the COMT enzyme does require a methylation group to, or a methyl group to function optimally. So working with something like S-adenosylcobalamin, uh, rather S-adenosylcholocysteine. Uh, sorry, I'm getting text at the same time at the top of my screen, so sli slightly distracted there. Um, S-adenosylmethionine, or CME for short, is an important cofactor, but um, uh, that is something that can actually potentially trigger the production of serotonin in the first place. So I would personally be very cautious with um, anything that adds more methylation into the mix if a person was dealing with serotonin syndrome. Uh, next one is, a, do, 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 do. okay, yeah, uh, I, I said I'd reply to this. Unfortunately, I don't have any useful information about it. Um, person says they took methylene blue for about a week. They feel really bad. I'm really sick. Could it be that seven keto DHEA raises serotonin? Oh wait, okay, no, I, I do have I do have thoughts about this one actually. Um, I also take melatonin and GABA in the evening. Um, I'm not aware of um, DHEA. Um, boosting up serotonin levels in a meaningful way. Um, they're not, you know, directly related. Um, you know, DHEA interconverts into different sex hormones and other steroid hormones, um, but not into serotonin, which is totally different. So I don't think that there's a direct correlation there. Uh, melatonin, on the other hand, can um, interconvert with serotonin because melatonin is derived from um, serotonin. Um, so that can potent could potentially trigger um, an issue with serotonin syndrome. But a person feeling sick from methylene blue might be feeling sick because it's ramping up their antioxidant levels too quickly. It's pushing detox pathways too aggressively. Methylene blue has some antimicrobial properties to it as well. So it might be killing off systemic microbes in a given individual. Um, so unless a person has distinct symptoms of serotonin syndrome, um, then it, they might be feeling crummy for other reasons, not just related to um, serotonin um, uh, elevation. Uh, next question is, is methylene blue helpful for people with ADHD? Um, it could be, um, I mean, in my experience, most of the folks I work with with ADHD, well, I've worked with you know many folks with um, ADHD who are adults. Um, the vast majority has been in uh, uh, pediatric patients um, and I'm not, certain of the safety and efficacy of methylene blue in pediatric patients. We usually use other things like liposomal glutathione um, and, and other things like saffron and, and methylation support and different things like that. So I haven't used methylene blue in uh, pediatric patients with um, AD, ADD or ADHD. Um, I have recommended methylene blue to a couple of folks with AD, ADD, ADHD, um, and, uh, but more for like, you know, helping with clearing their mold toxicity and uh, just general um, detoxification support and things like that. Um, I haven't really used it with the intention of helping to try to optimize um, cognitive function in folks with an ADD, ADHD diagnosis. So um, I can't really say a whole ton about that, but I think on paper, it would be a really logical thing to consider trying for someone with ADD or ADHD, given that lots of antioxidants for the brain tend to be good for just about anybody, especially if there's any type of neurodivergence going on. And then the very last question here is, what about GABA and passion flower together with methylene blue? Um, so I'm quite confident, um, again, not giving any medical advice here, but based on some of the interaction checks that we have done here, and I say we, you know, me and my fearless, uh, tireless residents, uh, I'm quite confident that there's no appreciable interaction between GABA and methylene blue. Um, in terms of passion flower, one of the, you know, kind of challenging things with herbs when we're thinking about interactions is that um, not every herb has um, been, or an herb is not, a given herb, even if it's a common one like passion flower, has not been studied in combination with, you know, every other agent out there on the planet, um, every other pharmaceutical or other natural health product. So in terms of how they might interact together, we could look at it uh, theoretically, um, but we don't really know for sure. And with passion flower, to my understanding, it's not something that jacks up uh, serotonin levels in a really meaningful way. Um, however, um, we don't know 100% what the mechanism of action is with something like passion flower. So if I had a patient who was taking passion flower, it was helping their sleep or their anxiety or whatever it happened to be, and I thought, man, I think they really might be benefit from methylene blue, um, I would personally consider titrating it up. But anything that's working on neurotransmitters in some way, like passion flower, valerian root, whatever it happens to be. Um, if I'm not 100, if we're not 100% sure of what the exact mechanism is, and again, with herbs, we probably aren't 100% sure because they haven't been exhaustively, exhaustively studied, um, I would be, uh, I would I'd just approach it with caution and say, well, you know, you're on this, I'm not 100% sure if it might interact in some way, so maybe let's start with a 25% of a full dose try that for like a week or so, doing okay, half half of a full dose, doing okay after a week, just gradually type trade it up 25% every week or so, give or take, um, uh, in case anybody's 
going to ask this question, I'm not allowed to talk, or not, not well, per my regulatory college, I cannot talk about specific dosages over social media. So if you're thinking, well, what's 25% of a full dose? I'm sorry, I can't give any treatment advice, um, or that would be construed as direct treatment advice. Can't talk about dosages. Thank you for all the questions. Uh, thanks for everyone's interest on this topic. I think methylene blue is fascinating and wonderful as well. Um, so I'm always happy to talk about it. If you have other questions on this topic or uh, questions about anything else, just post in the comment section below and I will do my best to answer as soon as I can.